Hey everybody, I'm going to make a video tutorial here on how to make mosaic pins for knife handles. Uh, kind of like these that I made here earlier this week, or this month anyway. Um, basically my method is a little different than a lot of the methods I've seen out there. I use the vacuum method. I know a lot of people use the method where you will um, pour it into the tube and then slide your, your pieces in or just drain it all in at once. I like this method because I can use um, thicker epoxies, like the two ton epoxies is what I tend to use. Um, I know acker glass is probably the best to use for this, but it's extremely expensive. And I find that I've never had any issues with any of my pins coming out when I use this two ton epoxy. This is basically the store equivalent of uh, a two ton. This is a minute, 30 minute slow cure. It's supposed to be waterproof. It works pretty well for me. Basically what you're going to start out with is metal tube. You can get these from uh, KNS Precision Metals. Um, most hobby stores sell them. And uh, Alro Steel is a pretty good resource if they got one in your area. eBay as well. I've got quite a lot of um, good stock from them. Basically uh, whatever kind of material you want to put inside of it. Brass, copper, wires, stuff like that. So, I've seen a lot of different methods online of people coming up with mathematical equations to figure out what kind of wire you can get in, what kind of pattern you can arrange it in. I find that if I put it together and I like the way it looks, I'll go with it. So, on this one it's just uh, seven strands surrounding a, a single tube. Uh, I got some square in square, some round in square, different tubes. Um, Basically what you do is you're going to need your vacuum pump, you're going to need your two ton epoxy or whatever epoxy you want to use, acker glass as well. Um, I have an opaque dye that I got from USA KnifeMaker.com. Uh, you're going to need some uh, tubing. Um, I use this for a couple different reasons. It's uh, a little easier to hook up to the vacuum pump and it's a good clear indicator gauge at where my epoxy is sitting at the time. Uh, you definitely don't want to get epoxy up into the the tube there, uh, it's going to mess up your pump. So what I'll do is I'll take my tube that's filled with my wire pieces that I've already pre-sanded because you want them all nice and roughed up. You're just going to slide the tip over and then just wrap duct tape around it just so you get a really good seal. I've got a couple done already. So uh, I'm going to do one of these. I think this is a half inch with a square tube inside. So basically once you got this all taped up you take your epoxy, it's a 50-50 mix, uh, just squirt it in. I usually use these little craft cups because it creates so much heat, it'll actually melt the cup. And uh, I double stack them so I don't have any, any issues there with spillage. When you think you're about a good 50-50 mix, I'm going to add a little bit of my dye, 3 or 4 drops. There's plenty to give it a nice dark black color four grips in there and then just use a little craft stick and mix it all up. I usually mix it for about 30 seconds to a minute just until it looks like everything is nicely consolidated between the two different uh, parts, the hardener and the resin. Looks like we're pretty good there. Um, with this method, you don't really waste a lot, so I'll make up a bunch of these at one time and then I'll go ahead and mix up my epoxy and I'll, I'll make pins until I run out of epoxy. Um, with this, this slides out a little too easily for me. I, I, I like it a little tighter. It creates a little more headache in the end because once you draw a vacuum, it'll pull the wire up into here, but it's not so much of an issue because once your tube's filled up, you just snip your your pipe here and push your pieces back down into it. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this tube onto my vacuum chamber. Just make sure you don't get any leaks in it. That's the, that's the biggest part there. So we're all set there. Now this is a pretty messless operation. Um, I I'd do this at the kitchen table or sitting in front of the TV just on the floor. You know, all your mess is in here. That's about it. So you're just going to put your pin in, hold and just start pumping, get to about 25 inches of mercury and you can let go for a minute and see, yeah, I'm sitting pretty good at 27 right now. I got a pretty good vacuum pulled on this. As you can tell, it's already pulled up my wire through the tube here. 
So I'll just give it a couple more pumps and just uh, let it sit. As long as it's got a good vacuum on it, you can just uh, just relax and, and let the, uh, the vacuum pull the epoxy up into the tube. Uh, you should see epoxy come out of both sections of the pipe, up here and up here, um, if the draw is correct. But yep, we're already starting to get epoxy pull up there, and epoxy is coming up there now. It's working pretty good, actually. So I'll pull up a little bit more into it until I feel like we've got enough in there. That's, that's pretty good right there. So I'll let pressure off of it. I'll go ahead and take my wire snips and cut it right at the base. It doesn't usually pull the wire up that high, but not a big deal. We can work around on that. So there we go. Our epoxy's pulled up into the top. I'll just take a little craft stick now, shove it back down into the epoxy. So everything's back down into the tube. And all you got to do is just take take your pin out, rub it off on the wall there, put a little piece of duct tape over the end of it. And the point of this is to keep all your epoxy inside your tube. Wrap it around there good. Set it up on its end. Let it sit overnight. Uh, anything that's up here will drain down and fill any extra voids. I've never really had any issues with voids in mine. And then just set it aside and you're good to go. Uh, tomorrow morning I'll take it out and I will cut the ends off with a bandsaw and uh, sand it all up and see what we got. Thanks for watching.